What a weekend! More specifically, what a start to the NFL season. If the early window of games yesterday is any indication of how this season's going to go, this is going to be one hell of an NFL regular season. Almost every game in the early window came down to the final drive. My Saints, after being completely overmatched, completely outcoached for three quarters, the Saints took over in the fourth quarter, found a way to win. I have spent the last two years trying to find Michael Thomas for three quarters of that game yesterday. I was still looking for him. As it turns out, Michael Thomas, he was just waiting on the fourth quarter to make his triumphant return. It is going to be a great season in the NFL. The national anthems yesterday across the league, they were a thing of beauty. It wasn't like the national anthem in the WNBA where the song begins to play and woke welfare recipients walk off the court back into the porta potty locker room. I did not see one player yesterday kneeling in the NFL. I thought the league commemorated 9-11 beautifully. Capped off the night with Sunday night football, watching a typical scene unfold. Tom Brady winning and the Dallas Cowboys choking. The channel. This channel, we hit another milestone over the weekend. We exceeded 35,000 subscribers. At some point this week, maybe even later on this afternoon, I will do what we always do when we pass another milestone. I'll share a personal story along the journey to get here. But first, let's go ahead and dive into Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is the latest target on the virgin community's quest to end mythical racism. And I use that word community for a reason. You'll understand why here in just a second. Now, this is not the first time that Chick-fil-A has been targeted by the Butt Brigade. They've accused them of being anti-gay gay. The owners of Chick-fil-A publicly stated they would not donate money to anti-gay gay groups. Then two years later, they did just that. Another example of the mainstream media, once again, giving you partial truth without context. Chick-fil-A never said they would stop donating to what are perceived anti-LGBT groups. In 2019, Chick-fil-A said they were changing their philanthropic model. There's a huge difference. Fast forward a year or two later, school systems across the country are teaching six-year-olds about the butt bongo. Your 60-year-old religious teacher in the first grade, she's been replaced with a 25-year-old non-binary toilet plunger. With Chick-fil-A being a Christian company, I imagine they have a problem with that. Now, the restaurant chain, they also have been supportive of Donald Trump, which, as you guys know, is a direct violation of the woke commandments. So Chick-fil-A has been labeled Orange Man Bad Supporters, meaning shit fucks have accused the owners of spending too much time in the sun. Have you guys ever had the pleasure of encountering a real-life shit fuck before? With what we do here every day on the channel, I've got to spend a lot of time around skilled players of the bongo. There is this misconception that they hate Donald Trump because of political reasons. While this is partially true, they also hate Donald Trump because of his tan. Shit fucks have a passionate hatred for the sun. Why do you think they're always complaining about global warming? They live in fear that one day the earth is just going to explode. That's the reason these people spend all their time indoors scouring Twitter for something to offend them. Over the weekend, while us normal people were watching football, bongo beaters spent their time searching Twitter trying to find their trigger moment. They found their latest trigger moment in a response tweet from Chick-fil-A. Now, in order to understand this situation properly, we're going to have to put on our trusty woke hat. Now, as you're about to see, if I can get this thing comfortable, there you go. As you're about to see, the only way to comprehend this level of stupidity and bullshit is by wearing the woke cap. It all started Friday with some dude named Don. Now, I'm kind of surprised that the butt brigaders are victimizing Don here since Don could be short for Donald, a name that immediately causes woke boners to become flaccid. But they made an exception here. Perhaps they are pretending Don is short for Donita, the transgender version of Donald. That's a Don they can get behind. But anyway, Don tweeted at Chick-fil-A about them not having spicy chicken nuggets. Now, as you can see, Chick-fil-A replied. Your community will be the first to know when spicy items are added to our menu. For us normal people, 
this would be end of story. For the normally challenged, this was only the beginning. Oh, this was only the beginning. Losers from across the country came out of their closets and started flooding Chick-fil-A with accusations. What do you mean by community? You can't say that word. That is a trigger word. You see, Don is a black man. Well, I mean, I assume Don's a black man. For all I know, he could identify as Pound the Bongo, chief of the woke tribe of Native Guardians. Now, in all fairness, Don is not the one who was offended by Chick-fil-A's response. He's simply the target of victimization to further the narrative that not only is Chick-fil-A anti-gay-gay, -gay, not only are they supporters of suntans, Chick-fil-A is also guilty of mythical racism. According to Woke United Methodist, African Americans are the only people in America that enjoy spicy food. In their eyes, Chick-fil-A's response read, We will let you black people know when we add spicy food to our menu. Until then, take your business to Popeye's. All right, let me take off the woke hat. Let me take off the woke hat here so we can view this response from a logical perspective. What Chick-fil-A meant by community was the fucking city Don lives in. They were not talking about the black community. They weren't talking about the LGBT community. They were talking about the community, you know, the community filled with people from all races and different backgrounds. It turns out this is a routine response from Chick-fil-A when they receive requests like this. Check it out for yourself. This response right here, it was sent just two weeks ago to someone named Daniel. There's that word again, community. How come there was no fake outrage to this response? If I had to guess, Daniel's a white dude. You're not allowed to exhibit fake outrage over a white dude. Hell, in most cases, you're not allowed to display fake outrage with white people, period. The only times white people are victims is if they're classified as victims in the Me Too movement or they identify as a flagpole and spend their time looking for a hole to insert themselves into. That's it. That's it. Now, I just showed you how this was a routine response from Chick-fil-A. With that being said, how do you think the mainstream media chose to cover this story? Just take a wild guess. I'll even make it multiple choice. I'll give you two options. One, the mainstream media reported the full truth with all context and allowed their readers to decide. Or two, the media reported part of the truth while inserting their narrative that Chick-fil-A is guilty of mythical racism. Well, Casey, this is too easy. We have an honest and trustworthy media in this country. They are not agenda driven. The answer is clearly number one. Oh, my naive, woke shit fuck. You are wrong again. Headline at Yahoo. Chick-fil-A responds to outrage over tweet about chicken nuggets that seemingly targets black man's race. Headline at something called The Root. What do you mean by that Chick-fil-A says black Twitter following a shady tweet? Um, what the fuck is black Twitter? I've heard of Twitter. Never heard of black Twitter before. Are those two separate platforms? As someone who not only identifies as a white male, but is actually a white male, am I allowed to use black Twitter? No, only marginalized groups are allowed to use black Twitter. Oh, really? Well, that doesn't sound very inclusive to me. That doesn't sound very diverse. Matter of fact, it is the exact opposite of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Headline over at NBC News, Chick-fil-A says tweet seemingly referencing black community was a poor choice of words. Did you see it again, that word, seemingly? That word was included by numerous woke media outlets when covering this story while creating their headline. There was nothing seemingly about it. There was no reference to the black community, period. Just because someone uses the word community, it doesn't mean they're referencing the black community, the LGBT community, the bongo community led by the bastion of butt bongo, Shay Shay Sharp. Sometimes it simply means the fucking community. That's it. Unfortunately, and this is really disappointing, but unfortunately, 
Chick-fil-A is the latest organization to violate the golden rule here on the channel. Seems like every week we're having to add new people to this club. We've had to start a cemetery laying to rest the mainstream media careers of people at CNN and MSNBC. Now, I'm going to have to set up an entire wall dedicated to violators of the golden rule. Now, for those of you guys new to the channel, we have one golden rule here. Never, ever, 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 ever acquiesce to the demands of a shit fuck. You never apologize to these people. They view an apology as a sign of weakness, and they will use that to exploit you. Now, although Chick-fil-A didn't outright apologize, they were still weak in their response. According to the Today Show, Chick-fil-A said, their response was a poor choice of words. It wasn't intended to be disrespectful. We often use the word community in a broader sense. <laughs> you know what the response should have been? Now, you can make the case that Chick-fil-A shouldn't have responded at all. But if you want to reply, you know what the response should have been? You knew exactly what we meant by the word community. If you claim to need further explanation, you're either a woke shit fuck or a member of the Shea Shea Butt Brigade. Either way, we don't want your business. That's it. It's that simple. These major corporations, they are so worried about offending 8 to 10% of the population, they forget about the 90% of normal people. I'm talking about all normal people, black people, gay people, transgender people. Some of my biggest supporters here on the channel, people that have been following the channel the longest, they fall into these supposedly marginalized groups. Now, you wouldn't think that would be the case. You'd think they would be offended by me. But it's actually the complete opposite. They're offended by the media. They're offended by Woke United Methodists. Most people don't want to be marginalized. They don't want to be victimized. More importantly, they don't want to be used to further an agenda that will strip away their rights. But let me know what you guys think. Chick-fil-A, the latest to be accused of mythical racism. Instead of standing up for themselves, they break like a cheap cucumber and attempt to appease the unappeasable. Sound off in the comments below. Hit that like button for me like you guys always do. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We come with fresh content every day, twice most days, probably Probably won't be uploading on Sundays again until after NFL season. It's just too difficult to get a video done and run the sports book at the same time. So it might be a while before we're live on the channel Sundays again. But you guys can contact me by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com, kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.